and welcome to E4M from Khan. I have with me today Adam Gerhardt. He's the global CEO of Mindshare. Adam, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Adam, what are your expectations from Khan this year? Yeah, so Khan's renowned for being a festival of creativity and innovation. This year, I don't think will be any different, but we'll see new topics emerge uh, around the importance of AI. Um, importantly, I think a stress on not just innovation, but how that drives business and outcomes in the future. Um, and I think a broader uh, a broader cross section of how new technologies are developing and, and changing the landscape for consumers. As you mentioned, AI, uh, the integration and technology, uh, the integration of technology and innovation is what we've seen a lot from Mindshare over the last year. How has this adoption been of uh, AI been for the uh, by clients, and how will it help drive creativity and growth? Because yesterday uh, we were at the press conference, and they said about twelve percent of entries, or I think about eight to twelve percent of winners this year is AI. Yeah. So is the adoption happening from the client's end? Yeah, absolutely. I think what's interesting about it, though, is the the vast array of ways that it's being leveraged. Um, you know, from from our side, when it comes to marketing and deployment of media, um, we're building pilot. Uh, we're building products that can auto optimize or auto bid in milliseconds. So, from an activation perspective, it's immensely powerful. But you take it to the other extreme; it's improving content and and innovation. Um, one of the things that we're incredibly proud of is some work that we did with um, Britannia in, in India for uh, Gomal, um, where uh, we partnered with Ravi Shak, uh, Shastri, um, a famous cricketing coach. And when people would ask questions around the World Cup, um, we could actually respond with um, not just chatbot-like functionality from Ravi, but actually video as well. So generative AI video that could be produced in 0.2 seconds to respond mm -hmm. to consumers. So deeper engagement, more meaningful connection with consumers in a more personalized way. Um, but then you push it even further and we have some clients uh, like Lufthansa who actually are using it for new product development. And they recently announced that they are no longer, they're going to suspend the publishing of their in-flight magazine. Okay. And it's because they're going to use AI to empower their employees to tell stories about their favorite places that they visited, top restaurants, all of those sorts of things. And AI actually becomes the mechanism through which they tell those stories. And so new product development all the way through to activation and everything in between. So uh, when uh, it, if they're doing away with the magazine, so mm -hmm. it will be on the content. Is that where the library will rest? Yeah, and and their employees will be the ones that are producing all of it, um, and consumers can engage with it in a, in a variety of different ways. Okay, um, you know while AI has its pro pros, let's speak about the cons also. What have been the challenge in using AI in the media? Any guidelines that you set for Mindshare as well as your brands when you're using it? Yeah, absolutely. I think you know it's it's AI has been around for a while, but it's now just coming to the forefront of everyone's thinking. Um, but it does require that we take a very calculated and strategic approach to how it's being used, um, and it raises questions around everything from you know fake news all the way through to you know the ethics of of AI and. Um, just because we know how to reach someone doesn't mean that we actually should reach them. Um, and I think AI has the potential for great progress, but also great detriment if we're not careful with its application. And so we are working with clients and brands for um, how they leverage it, um, taking into account the impact of the consumers that they're reaching all the way through to the ethics of the way in which it's being applied. But any brand guidelines that you've been able to draft so far? Yeah, absolutely. But I would say they're, they're first, there's a base layer, which is fundamental, which is, you know, how do we make sure that we are doing no wrong? How do we make sure that what we're doing isn't intrusive or, or encroaching on consumers' privacy, those sorts of things? And that's the foundational layer. On top of that, then, you can start to overlay brand guidelines for, um, for a variety of different uses. Uh, we live in an era where a new technology is present every couple of weeks or every couple of months. 
So with disruptive technology being the norm, what are the new ad- opportunities you're seeing for advertisers? So I, I think the best technology isn't disruptive. It's actually transformative. Um, and when we think just two years ago, we were talking earlier, you know, um, metaverse was the exactly. talk of the talk of can. It's nowhere anymore. Um, and I think, you know, the importance of technology is that you test your way into it. Um, and it's an iterative process. And if we keep the consumer at the heart of what we are trying to accomplish, that becomes the best filter and the best barometer for how we apply technology in the future. Just to follow up, like you said, uh, you mentioned Metaverse. Uh, you know, every time there's a new technology, brands and agencies, you're looking to test it. So how do you know that this is a technology worth investing in? Or yeah. is it a tried and tested formula? Then when you fail, then you know, okay, this didn't work out. I think it's it's, it's exactly that, which is, you know, new technology it has immense potential, but we also have to make sure that we don't go all in. We saw some brands go all in on Metaverse and to their detriment, right? Uh, you know, now they're not doing anything in it where the consumer base isn't there. Um, and so I think it is a matter of carefully choosing and being selective about how we leverage technology, testing our way into it and constantly adapting. Now, the other area of growth, significant area that too, has been the commerce landscape and even the retail media. How are you seeing this evolving for brands? Because particularly even in India, e-commerce and quick commerce particularly has literally witnessed a significant, I won't even say significant, staggering growth. Yeah. Um, I mean, first of all, retail media networks, it, it's about a $150 billion industry out of the $990 billion. So it's 15%. It's, it is growing immensely. Um, but the interesting thing is when we think about retail as a whole, um, retail as a whole is about a $27 trillion industry. So retail media networks are only just scratching the surface oh. of what possible. And you can start to understand why consumers are are interested in it and why it's relevant to them, but also for for brands. It offers the scale of TV and and big channels, but with the addressability of digital. Um, And I think it's that combination that means that you can use it for big brand building work all the way through to performance. Um, And I think I, I was in Mumbai two weeks ago. And the, to your point, the emergence of quick commerce is incredible. Um, And I think we're starting to see um, consumer experience be the big driver because it's so frictionless. It is so easy. And I think that means that retail commerce will continue to grow exponentially. Now, talking of technology, if you could just tell me where are Mindshare's investments going into any new products or services that you're looking at? Yep, absolutely. So um, WPP as a whole has committed over $300 million a year um, in AI and technology. For us, that means um, identifying new ways of working across uh, across organizations around the world, um, but also um, in terms of investing in new capabilities, whether it's how we leverage AI for content generation, all the way through to, as I mentioned earlier, things like auto bidding and machine learning that can actually do what humans could do, but in a fraction of a second. Um, and so some of the new products that we're, that we're building are around predictive analytics. Um, it's around um, auto optimization of campaigns. Um, and I think that really takes some of the, some of the, 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 the lower value work out of what we were doing to allow us to reinvest in more strategic thinking and innovation. Consumer, as you were mentioning, it's a, the consumer has to be kept at the top. But the, with the consumer present across multiple touch points, what's the challenge in ensuring that the communication is consistent and seamless throughout? I, I think the biggest thing is making sure that we are genuinely thinking about the consumer first. It's the reason that quick commerce is so prevalent right now, because it takes the friction out of everything. You can have what you want with the click of a button in a fraction of the time that it would have taken previously. It makes it so easy. And so if we start to think about the consumer through the lens of everything that we are doing, it gives us a really good barometer for whether or not what we're doing is right, whether or not it's the right technology, um, and gives us a good North Star for how we engage consumers in the future. And uh, how do you see, you know, your client and uh, agency relationship? How is that evolving? Because you've had, say, Unilever as your client, and this has been a long-term relationship. Yeah. But how is the relationships generally, not just Unilever, but other clients evolving? So uh, one of the things that we're really proud of at Mindshare is uh, that the average tenure of our top 10 clients is 25 years. 
for an agency, that is unheard of. And so we pride ourselves on that longevity. But that's not to say we don't pitch. It's not to say we don't transform. In fact, the opposite. It means we have to constantly transform. We have to constantly push and keep our eye on what's coming next. And so for a longstanding client like Unilever, um, it means that we have to think about how, you know, what the next iteration of retail media is going to look like for them. It means that we need to understand predictive analytics in a, in a new way. And all of that means that we are becoming much more consultative in how we work with clients, um, not just being brokers of media, but actually thinking about their biggest business challenges and how we can help solve those. Then what's uh, just a continuation of this? What's mind share secret to remain on top? <laughs> um, I think it's or a, it, the secret of a quarter of a century relationship. <laughs> rather. Um, I think it is it is constant curiosity and finding people that are passionate about a client's business and never willing to rest on their laurels. And that ability allows us to keep pushing for what's next and constantly look at how we keep our clients ahead. Uh, now, your client uh, Unilever is being awarded the Marketer of the Year with mm. whom, like you said, you had a long, long-standing relationship. So how is your particularly this partnership involved, uh, evolved and any work that you've done for, my, for Unilever from across the say, from across the globe that you're really proud of? Yeah, I mean that the Unilever relationship is one of constant evolution, as, as I've as I've kind of mentioned. Um, I think that the key thing for them is um, it's always about outcomes, but outcomes through the lens of 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 purpose or doing what's right for the consumer. So you know, Dove is the one that everybody kind of points towards, but they have so many other products. Um, like Noor is a, a great example of one where um, there's a campaign that we had that was recently recognized um, that actually. Uh, looked at gamers and how we could reach them using a product like a bullion cube. Um, and actually what we, what we realized is in games, when people ate vegetables, it gave you the least power in gaming. Instead, you want meat or something okay. of the sort. And we changed that and we flipped it on its head where actually if you eat your vegetables, it gives you more power in the game. And so the ability to look at new media and how consumers are changing um, with genuine insights around the product benefits and how we can combine those two um, is incredible. And, and, you know, this year we've got work like that that's that we're really proud of, but also Dove, I think we have in the media category alone, five shortlisted entries already, um, you know, celebrating everything from uh, uh, um, hair diversity and championing um, women um, with, with, you know, diverse hair and, and celebrating the fact that it's okay in the workplace, um, all the way through to girls and self-esteem and encouraging them to stay in sport. And I think when we look at the breadth of work, that's what we're really proud of. Where is the NOR campaign? Where is that from? And where is the Dove campaigns from? Um, so NOR is in UK. Um, Dove was around the world. Um, when we look at the women in, in sport, it was US and a couple of other key markets as well. Um, now, I just wanted to also ask you, how, what is your, how are you looking at the global market right now in terms of sentiment? Um, I'm, I mean, I'm still really bullish on it. We're predicting 2024, we're going to grow at about 7 to 8% from an ad, ad, um, ad forecast perspective. Um, I think about India in that context, and it's really encouraging to me because some of the, some of the big markets that are more established from, a, from an ad um, market perspective are growing at 4 to 5%. India is double that. Um, and so India is number eight globally in terms of the size of the, no. the ad market, um, but it's growing at double the rate. It is quickly on track to surpass and usurp many of the other markets. So I'm still bullish, but I think um, there are some markets that are going to run um, leaps and bounds ahead of the others. Uh, you know, you stated that India should be the second largest market uh, for Mindshare by 2025, which is next year. Yeah. Is this wish list still on track? Yeah, we're, I would say, um, given the trajectory that I just mentioned, we're seeing a similar trend. So um, it's pacing a little bit further. So it might take us a little bit, a little bit more than 2025, but we are growing aggressively there versus um, some of the other markets where the global forecast and the global, the global industry means that some of the volatility um, isn't seeing the types of investments that we're seeing in a market like India. Uh, a word on the leadership in India, Amin Lakhani and his team. Mm. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I look at that team and first of all, they're, they're definitely curious and they're pushing innovation. Um, things like predictive analytics are top of mind for them. How we use AI and build it into, you know, work like Golmal, um, is incredibly, um, front and center for them. So I love getting to visit the market because not only is it dynamic, but they're taking advantage of those opportunities. Let's just see how you are with the forecast. Last year, Mindshare picked up the Khan Line Media Network of the Year Award. Yep. Can we expect this? Are you hoping for a winning streak <laughs> this year? Just to end it off. Uh, we are, we're, we've won twice in the last four years. Yes. We've got a good short list going so far, but I don't want to jinx it just yet. So touch wood, we will have a great showing again this year. Thank you so much, Adam, for your time. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.